Hello and welcome to the show. It is time for an American muscle car to become a hill climb monster. And what better vehicle to use than the Dodge Charger RT? Now, this is likely to have quite a lot of power, which should be good for getting up the mountain. How much control we're going to have, I'm not sure. However, muscle cars have tended to be a pretty damn good choice when it comes to this, as they get massive, massive tyres, and while they're relatively heavy to, to start with, means we can tend to get a lot, a lot of power in them and keep them within S1 class, so that's all good. Engine swaps, I'm not sure about what we're going to have to do with this. We have the options 8.4 litre V10, so the Viper engine, 6.5 litre V12, or the 6.2 litre V8. I believe this is the Hellcat engine. Uh, I don't think the 6.2 litre V8 uh, supercharged can be changed into any... I don't think I've, I haven't seen it before, particularly. So I believe this is a Hellcat engine. It would be the right power figures and so on. So, yeah, they're possibles. Although, as I said, with this series, I want to keep the standard engine if I can. So if this vehicle does get the PI, get to the top of S1 class with the standard engine, we will be keeping it. Likewise, I would like to supercharge it rather than twin-turbo it. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, that doesn't get us out of C-Class, however, the tyres are going to jump the PI up massively, as they always do. <laughs> there we go. The snow tyres that we are going to need will take us almost to the top of A-Class, and then tyre widths 275s at the front. Should be pretty good for turning, but more importantly, 345s at the rear should give us plenty of traction. Uh, I have seen a few people commenting saying well, small tyres should be better on snow. Uh, theoretically, possibly in real life. However, in Forza, I've tested it, they're not. So bigger tyres are still better out in the snow, and this has got some of the biggest tyres we have seen bigger than that of the Lancia. Although, let's not forget considerably heavier than the Lancia. Now, we are going to want to take some weight out of the car. Yes, the Transit got away with uh, with a fair amount of weight. However, the Transit was also awful through the corners. So, if we can strike a balance between weight reduction and power, I'm okay with that. We're going to go full weight reduction for now and then see what putting power parts into the car does. I've actually got plenty of PI still to play around with. 800 torque. Can this get 1,000 torque from the standard engine? That might be pushing it a little bit. I've also just noticed the PI is almost at the top of S1 class. I do kind of want to get as much power out of this as we possibly can with this, with this standard engine. So if we... Oh, we're going to be quite close to maxing out the engine and still be able to run the full weight reduction. I don't think we're quite... Oh, maybe we can, in fact. Ooh. Just had a thought. Had a nasty, nasty thought. Uh, okay, right. That's fine. Um, gearbox. When you change the driveline, of course, it will change the gearbox, which means it won't still have the standard four-speed that the car came with initially. So there's no real point in me wasting the PI in changing the gearbox to that one. Now, it will give us a slightly higher top speed. Actually, it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference to the PI, so maybe we will uh, go for this one. It will give us a top speed of 216 miles an hour. If it's not giving us any PI change, then there's no reason not to add it, essentially. Uh, right, what are we doing with engine parts? Pistons up to 906 horsepower with 907 torque. As you can imagine, the engine is a bit of a beast. 944 horsepower. Yes, I want that in my car. Uh, this is just adding weight. It's not actually, it's, it's, it's decreasing uh, PI because of the added weight. And that's actually a fair amount of weight. We might not bother with that. We will, though, go for a flywheel, potentially. Let's go have a look, actually, with the driveline bits and pieces that we're doing. Uh, it doesn't seem any point in taking off the weight reduction because we've already got the ludicrous levels of power that we need here. So there's no no need for faffing around with the weight reduction. I'm pretty happy with the power levels we've got going on. And then flywheel, the highest grade that we can get away with, which is that one. Ooh, shall we have a look at... Uh, of course, we need this bit, don't we? I completely forgot, and that is my bad on uh, that front. We will have to go and just take off a couple of parts because we do need downforce. I was tempted to go with the, with that, although the slight restriction on visibility is a slight pain in the arse. Um, right, we need to go find a PI. We'll just drop the driveline off it or a flywheel down a grade. Flywheel's going to be easy way of doing it. Uh, can't do it with a clutch. Worth a try. You never know. Uh, with, en with, uh, sorry, not with, engine, sorry, with driveline swaps, often the likes of the gearbox and so on 
uh, don't make a huge difference in PI. I think with the uh, with the new bits that are swapped into it, kind of all does the PI adjustment for you. So when you come to these, like we saw with the gearbox, you know, there's no difference in PI. So we might as well use the better one. Uh, same with same with the clutch. A uh, little bit difference in weight, but yeah. Anyway. We have got air. I'm glad I remembered about the aero. Um, I got distracted by, by power and grip. We have got our charger ready to go. 944 horsepower, 933 torque. On the go here in our Dodge with massive tyres. It's heavy at 3,300 pounds, but it's not as heavy as the Transit and has bigger tyres. So maybe we can have less horrible understeer through the corners. Maybe we can challenge the Delta. So the Charger is on the start line for the Devil's Corners Hill Climb. I'm going to have three runs through this course in attempts to go as fast as possible. Our current target set by the Lancia Delta S4 is a 159.1, a very quick time up this course. The Transit got close with a 59.3, so maybe if we get into the 58 with the Dodge, I would be, <laughs> I would be very happy. It's definitely got the power, it's whether we have the handling to uh, wrestle it around the corners. Now, don't be fooled into a false sense of security when we come barreling into turn one, it's almost 120 miles an hour in the Dodge, because the cars will have good grip through here, that's a lot of speed on the exit of that uh, corner because we're on the tarmac rather than, we're on the snowy icy tarmac rather than on the snowy icy dirt and the cars do take that corner very very well indeed. We do still have a fair bit of understeer in the Dodge which is perhaps not too surprising. Um, oh god yeah, we do have a fair, a fair <laughs> bit of understeer around here but it is better than the Transit. I mean if we're talking pure power to weight ratio, this thing has got pretty much twice the horsepower and definitely twice the torque of the Lancia, and while it is heavier, it isn't twice as heavy like the Transit was, so yeah, considerably, considerably better power to weight ratio going on in the Dodge, and we've got the bigger tyres, much bigger tyres in this car, so I'm hoping we can put that power down to the snow as well as possible, and hopefully the front end will get turned in nicely enough through these corners. The landings of the jumps, I am a little bit on the concern side for, but there is, um, Nothing I can really do about them. They're, <laughs> they're vicious buggers, but we've just got to kind of hope that uh, we can get away with it okay in the Charger. So far, things are going relatively well. It isn't too awful through these slow, meandering corners. Don't end up out wide there, though, like a moron, because that is very, very easy to do, and we are out of position slightly. Okay, we need to be a little bit further across to the... Oh, bumpy, 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 don't get caught on the ice. We need to be more to the right as we uh, crest that hill, otherwise we end up in trouble not carrying corner speed. Again, it's almost 100 miles an hour across the jump. We can definitely do better there. There is room for improvement on this on this run. Oh, and we're all out of shape into this final corner. It's all gone horribly wrong at the end there. It's a mess from the Charger to finish. A 201, was it 201-2, I think, on that first first run? I mean, there was definitely areas areas to work on, and yeah, that's uh, that, that's a quick time for, for an opening gambit. I think it's going to be close. So it is on to the second run for our dodge, and there is a couple of seconds to be found and it wasn't the cleanest of runs, so there is definitely some time to be made up around this course. It's all about being, I think, neat and tidy through these slower corners. We have the power. We have the power and we have the grip, but we've got to not lose too much time through the hairpins here. Running a tad wide and bumping the wall isn't ideal, but oh, come on, please get turned in, please get turned in, please get turned in. The Lancia was just so good at getting the front end into these corners and now in trying, oh this run here is not going to plan amazingly well in trying to get a slightly better lung. We've ever so, ever so slightly cracked the uh, the window, clonked the, the wall on the outside. Come on, come on Dodge, what can I get away with? This is going to be a little bit more I think of an explorey run. It's not gone particularly well to start with so I might end up just throwing the car at the course and seeing what happens in various places. 19 miles an hour though is very very quick up that section. I say very quick, the transit was doing similar. I think this may be the fastest car we have had down these straights. Oh come on now, stop bouncing around, stop bouncing around Dodge. Trying to use the banking around that turn ever so slightly to get it, uh, get it around with a little bit more 
speed. This is a nasty bugger of a corner. We're taking a very tight line in the dodge. I think that might be the way to go. It's one of those that I'm just not quite sure with. This is where we get into all sorts of trouble. Don't turn in too soon. It's really easy to do that across these crests. Or you can do what I'm doing here and turn in way too late. That's a horrible... The, the more I drive that corner, the more I dislike it. It's a really nasty bugger to uh, try and get right. That's much better, though. There we go. That's the ticket. That's what we want to be doing through there. It's 102 miles an hour as we leave that jump. Although we haven't then got to jump on the brakes for our second to last corner. Try and get as smooth a run through there as we can and power towards the line. We've got the acceleration. 59.5 that time out. Oh, we've got the gap down to half a second. And again, there was some scruffiness at the start of the run. There's a nervous Lance here somewhere yet again. Life is not easy at the top of the table for the Delta S4. It is very, very nerve-wracking in this series so far. So it is the final run for the Charger. Just half a second is needed if it is to displace the Lancia from the top of the table. And it might just be doable if everything goes well. But of course, that is asking a lot on a notoriously challenging and uh, dangerous, dangerous hill climb stage. We've got to get it through these hairpins as quickly as possible. We just can't afford to be losing time. We will make up the time in the acceleration zones, but uh, yeah, if we can lose as little as possible to begin with, that makes my life considerably easier. We're going to end up in the same wall. Trying to get it across, I think there may be a little crest that I'm hitting. As I'm trying to get the car across the road, that's where we end up brushing into the wall. We haven't cracked the uh, window this time around. Come on, wait to get on the power. Be a little bit patient. If you try and get on the power too soon, we're just going to get a lot of understeer and end up out wide, so it's better just to have that little pause and wait to get on the throttle than to uh, absolutely go for it. It's 121 miles an hour, so it is the new fastest car around this circuit. We've got a neat run out of there as well, which is good. Take out the uh, checkpoint on the way past. Get it slowed. Again, wait to get on the power, and then once we know we can get to full throttle, launch it down towards the next corner. Big, big airtime from the Dodge, but it's managing it okay. It's managing these airtimes without too much of a problem. Now, this next turn is such a nasty bugger because you're on a kind of on the crest when you want to be getting the car turned in to the corner. We have made it through this time. No problem minding the ice patches because they are something horrible around here. Again, on that power, lovely and early for the Dodge. Just two more corners to go. Don't fluff it up in the braking zone now for this penultimate turn. I'm tending to take the, the second to last turn very, very tight to get a better run through the last one and accelerate towards the line. It's going to be quick. It is a new fastest time. It is a new fastest time. While it is technically an unverified one from a small bump on the wall, I'm not, I'm not going to count that as an unverified for my leaderboard. A 58.5 from the Dodge. We go half a second faster than the Delta S4. That is a uh, yeah, second quicker than previous run. The Dodge is a nice car. I, I did kind of have an inkling that this might be a pretty damn good car up this course with the power it has and, well, with the power to weight ratio, we should say, that it has the humongous tyres and it wasn't too much of a handful to wrestle through the corners. You put all of that together and you're going to get a quick vehicle when it comes to throwing it up this hill climb course. I am, yeah, pretty damn satisfied with that, uh, with that time. It means we have a new leader here in the hill climb monsters. We are, yeah, half a second clear of the Lancia, almost a second clear of the Ford Transit. Turns out the Dodge Charger is an excellent car, should you need to get up a snowy hill. Well, certainly a thousand horsepower one, nearly a thousand horsepower one, is excellent for getting up a very, very snowy hill when it's all-wheel drive. Yeah, lots of, lots, of, lots of modifications might be needed, however, still, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good time. I wonder what will come along and uh, displace this one. It might be a while, it might be the next car. Not really sure with the, with this series. However, that is going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.